In this lesson, I'll show you two examples on how to find the gradient vector of a function in 2D. What you see on your screen here is the theory that you will need for question number two. So we'll start with a simple question, then we'll refer back to this for question two. Question one reads, given the function f at x, y is equal to the expression on the right side, find the gradient of the function at zero and two. So this symbol right here is called nabla or del. And we need to find the gradient evaluated at 0 and 2. In one of our previous videos where we found the directional derivative, which is the same thing as finding the gradient, we had to find the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y, and then evaluate those two functions at 0 and 2. So let's go ahead and do that here. We'll find the partial derivative of x, and you can represent this as the partial derivative of f with respect to x, whichever notation that you like. And that's equal to, starting with this term, e to the power of x, y squared, we'll keep y constant, and x is our variable that we're deriving. This becomes y squared. We're using the power rule. Plus, over here we end up with 5y, x goes away, it has a power of 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. And this is a constant, so it becomes 0. Let's find the partial derivative with respect to y or f sub y is equal to, starting with this term, e to the power of x y squared times, now we'll keep the x's constant, 2y x plus, keeping the x constant and the 5, 5x, and that becomes minus 3. Now our job is to evaluate this at 0 and 2. If you evaluate this correctly at 0 and 2, you can use your calculator for this, you should end up with 14. And over here, you should end up with negative 3. So the gradient of f at 0 and 2 can be represented by the vector 14 and negative 3. Now let's move on to something more complicated. In question number 2, they ask, the temperature at a point x, y is given by the function t at x, y is equal to the right side, where t is measured in Celsius and x and y are measured in meters. Find the rate of change of temperature at the point 1 and 2 in the direction of the point 4 and 3. So just like before, we'll find the gradient of this function, and we want to find out the rate of change, which means the gradient, starting at the point 1 and 2 and going in this direction precisely. So if we plot these two points on an xy plane, we should have a point at, let's say, 1 and 2 over here, and another point at 4 and 3 up here. And connecting these two points with an arrow, we have our vector. Now our vector obviously will have a horizontal and vertical length. The horizontal length from here to here is 4 minus 1, that's 3, and 3 minus 2, which is 1. So we have a vector at 3 and 1. In vector notation, we can represent this as 3i with a hat plus 1j also with a hat. I want to go back to this for a moment and you'll notice that to find the gradient of a function in a particular direction we first have to find the vector as we did in question number one for the gradient function and then multiply it the dot product of a and b which represents the unit vector for the direction in which they want. So we found the vector right now we need to find the unit vector and we can find the unit vector, which I'll represent as u with a hat. That's found by finding the magnitude of 3 and 1 and dividing both the x and y component by that magnitude. And that's mathematically represented right here, where the unit vector is equal to the vector divided by its magnitude. The x component and the y component of our unit vector will represent a and b in which we'll multiply the gradient vector with. If that's confusing to you, let's start with the magnitude. The magnitude is found by using the Pythagorean's theorem. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Rearranging for c, we end up with the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared is equal to c. That's equal to the square root of 10 is equal to c. So we just found the magnitude of our vector, this red arrow, 
and I'll take 3 divided by the square root of 10 and 1 divided by the square root of 10. This will represent A and this will represent B. And the reason why I'm choosing A and B is because it's consistent with the formula that's provided here. Notice that we're multiplying by the vector A and B. So now we will find the partial derivative with respect to x. So the partial derivative for the function t with respect to x or t of x is equal to 50 e to the power of negative x squared minus 4y squared. Now we take the derivative of that and multiply it to our factor here. The derivative with respect to x makes this go to 0 and this becomes negative 2x. Cleaning this up, we should end up with negative 100 e to the power of negative x squared minus 4y squared. And don't forget that x. Now we'll find the partial derivative with respect to y. We start with 50 e to the power of negative x squared minus 4y squared. That becomes a 0 and that becomes negative 8y. Cleaning this up, we should end up with negative 400 e to the power of negative x squared minus 4y squared times y. We're supposed to now substitute the point 1 and 2 into both of these. So substituting the point 1 and 2 into t sub x, you should end up with negative 100 e to the power of negative 17. And over here, substituting that exact same point, you should end up with negative 800 e to the power of negative 17. Therefore, our gradient vector is negative 100 e to the power of negative 17 and negative 800 e to the power of negative 17. And now we'll multiply that to this vector, the dot product of our unit vector, u hat. So we'll multiply this and this together and this and this together. Then add those two products up. And that's shown right here, what's highlighted. Now, if you do this correctly, your final result should be negative 1,100 over the square root of 10 times e to the power of negative 17. So approximately negative 1.44 times 10 to the power of negative 5. What this means is the amount, the temperature changes when we're at the point 1 and 2 and moving in the direction 4 and 3. This is in degrees Celsius. And there you have it. Two examples on how to find the gradient of a function in 2D.